Good afternoon or good morning. Uh, this lesson is for my honors in a grade one class. This is going to be for section 2.4 out of the book. Um, and our goals are going to be to review inequalities and solve inequalities. Before I get started, I want to say I hope everyone's doing okay out there. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right in. So I, I want to review inequalities. This is going to be the first part of the video. Um, the second part of the video and the second installation will be about solving inequalities. Now, I like to teach inequalities in a different way. I like to teach them as um, describing location, right? Describing position. And so we're used to this um, less than, less than or equal, greater than or greater than or equal to, and then um, x is what we're going to call our variable. But I don't like to use the, the traditional less than, less than or equal to. I like to use the the um, the, the description of the description of position um, in this. So I'm not going to say less than, I'm going to say left of. Now notice that I spell the word left with the uh, less than symbol. And so we're either left of something or we're going to be right of something. So I like to think about greater as right of and less than as left of. And it, it helps to this, you know, I, I, I find that my students do better um, with this. So what that means is numbers that are less in value are left of, of numbers um, on a number line. So let's, uh, let's describe some position, some positions of numbers here. Um, I could say that five is left of six, or I could say that six is right of five. So I'm giving, um, I'm giving a descriptive, uh, I'm describing the positions of these numbers. Five is left to six, or six is right of five. And I find that um, we understand right of and left of better than less than and greater than, and, the, and they're interchangeable. You know, if you want to stay with the less than and greater than, that's fine. But again, I, I, I find that um, you're going to have a better understanding um, as, we, as we think of just position. Now, um, I want to point something out here. This is very important. When the signs of numbers change, their position reverses. So I would now say that negative 5 is right of negative 6, and negative 6 is left of negative 5. This little observation about when they change the signs of numbers, then their position switches, right? So here, five is on the left of six. Now, negative five is on the right of negative six. That's going to be important, and that's and I'm, I'm mentioning this now because when we get into solving inequalities, one of the steps that you have to be careful of is when you divide by a negative. And again, I don't know if you've heard this rule before, but when you divide by a negative, you switch the inequality symbol that you're working with. And the reason why is when you change the signs of numbers, you change their position, right? So here we have five and six, and then when the signs are changed, the order reverses, and that's why we have to use a different description of their position. So I want to uh, just kind of teach you that. Um, I don't call x the variable in inequalities. Um, I call x the shading. Okay, and so if I had something that looked like this, I would say that the shading is left of six, right? So if I had a number line and there's my six, I know that I shade to the left of that. Um, if I gave you something that looked like this, negative five is right of the shading, I would, I would, switch the order of this, right? So negative five is right of the shading. That means that the shading is left of negative five, right? When, you, when, you, when we started describing the position of these two numbers and I started with five, I said five is the left, but when I reversed to where I started with, I had to switch the descriptive, the, the, the way I described their position. So negative five is right of the shading or the shading is left of negative five. I find it easier to graph when I start talking about the shading. 
So the shading is left of negative five. Now, this less than or equal to, that means that my, my, my circle is solid. And so these are boundary lines. This is not a solution. Six is not less than six. Six is not left of six, right? So that's why this is open. This is a way that I indicate that all numbers up to this value are solutions, but at this value, it's not gonna be a solution. You can also think of this as a, a boundary line in the football field, right? That's out of bounds. Um, here, negative five is less than or equal to negative five. So that's why this is shaded in because it tells me that this boundary is included in the solution. So this boundary is not included in the solution. This boundary is included in the solution. So it's very important that we uh, that we understand that the less than or equal to are solid circles. The strictly less than or the strictly greater than or strictly left of or strictly right of, those are open. These are out of bounds. So these are the boundaries of a football field. This would be the uh, boundaries on the soccer field. You can step on the line. You're not out of bounds. Right? So uh, that would be the, the difference in, in those symbols and, and what they what they tell us. So again, um, I like to think of inequalities as describing position. Left of, because I can spell the word left out of that symbol, left of and right of is my greater. I think of the variable as shading. Um, and again, uh, the important point that I wanna make is that we describe their position. Five is left of six, or six is right of five. Um, and when I change the signs of my numbers, their position switches. So, uh, and that'll be an important step or important um, concept for the next lesson when we solve inequalities. All right, so hopefully this makes some sense and uh, makes inequalities a little bit easier for you. I know that when I dealt with these things, uh, or when I was learning with these, I, I, I kind of struggled with it. And I understand left and right much better than greater than or, or less than. So hopefully this helps us to uh, get ready for the next lesson, which is solving inequalities. Time for part two. All right, so here we go, goal number two. Our goal is to solve inequalities. Now, the nice thing about solving inequalities is that we already know the steps to solve. We use the same steps to solve equations that we do to solve inequalities, with the exception of the last step. We have to make sure we're paying attention to, if we're dividing by a negative. And then the la we add a step, the seventh step. We're gonna draw a graph that represents the answers. So I'm gonna write one through seven. And we always do step seven because step seven is graphing, right? Seven, four, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. All right, so step one is can I eliminate fractions? Yes, I can, and I do that by multiplying everybody by the denominator. So everyone's gonna get a three. You get a three, you get a three, and you get a three. So I did stuff that. My fractions cancel on my first one, so I'm left with two x plus 18 is greater than or equal to six, or right of six. Um, can I distribute? No. Can I combine like terms on either side of the inequality? No. Are all my uh, variables on one side of the inequality? Yes, so I can't do that. Can I add or subtract away a number from the variable side of the uh, inequality? Yes, I can. So I can subtract 18 to both sides. Minus 18, minus 18. So now it's 2x is greater than negative 12. Can I divide away a number? Yes, I can. So I'm gonna divide away a two. And so now I know that my shading is right of negative six. So I need to do my seventh step, which is uh, graphing, because I want to know where my answers are. So my, I'm at negative six, and I'm going to shade with a solid circle to the right. The shading is right of negative six. Okay, so um, step seven is new. Step six we have to pay attention to if we divide by a negative. I divided into a negative, but I didn't divide by a negative, so I didn't switch this. Okay, so that would be an, one example of 
solving the inequality for x. The answer is the shading. And what this means is any number, including negative 6, any number to the right, when I plug it in to this original inequality, is going to give me a uh, true statement. Like, for example, if I was to plug in negative 3. Negative 3 is on the you know, right of negative 6. Negative 3 and positive 3, that becomes negative 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 6 is 4. 4 is on the right of 2. So that is the solution, right? 4 on the number line is right of 2. So any number, including 6, negative 6 on any number to the right, and including negative 6, that'll, that'll be a number that I can plug into this inequality and get a true statement. So there's an infinite number of solutions to a linear inequality. All right, let's look at our second example here. And again, I'm going to write my seven steps. Okay, seven steps. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're going to pay attention to six, and we're divided by a negative. And then our seventh step is our new step, and that's graphing. Can I get rid of fractions? No. Can I distribute? Yes. So I get 3x plus 12 minus 5x. And that's right of 6, okay. So I distribute it. Can I combine my terms? Yes. 3x minus 5x, that's minus 2x. Bring down everything else, so minus 2x plus 12, greater than 6. Okay. Um, are all my variables on one side? Yes, they are, so I don't need to do that step. Can I add or subtract away a number? Yes, I can. I can subtract away to 12. Okay, and so now I'm left with negative 2x is right of or greater than negative 6. Okay, so I did step 5. Now I'm going to do step 6. I'm now dividing by a negative. And when you divide by a negative, you're changing signs. And when you change signs of numbers, you change their position, which means you have to change how you describe their location. So right now I'm saying that negative 2x is on the right of negative 6. Right? But when I divide by a negative 2, I'm changing the signs of both sides of this inequality. And now, when I do that, like you saw up there, I switch the order of the numbers. So now, instead of being on the right, we now say that we're on the left. So that the answer is the shading is left of 3. Okay, so if I draw my graph, there's my 3. It's an open circle because 3 is out of bounds, and I shade to the left. So, for example, if I plug in... Uh, zero for x, right? Because that's a number on the left, that's in the shading. Then it becomes zero plus four, which is four, and that becomes zero. So three times four is 12. 12 is on the right of six. And so we get, we get the true solution because when we divide it by a negative, we change the number's position because we changed the sign. And so we had to change how we describe their position. So be very careful that when you divide by a negative, you change that. Not when you divide into a negative, but when you divide by a negative. All right, so this is the second part of this lesson. Uh, I hope it makes sense to you guys, and have a good day. See you guys later.